Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles. Today I wanted to share with you guys some cool stuff I got when I went to Universal Studios Japan and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, so getting to go to uh, USJ was a huge dream of mine. I didn't think I'd ever get to go because it's so expensive and so crowded. But we, uh, my husband found this ridiculously good deal with uh, a really cheap airline and um, we got to, you know, get our ticket, our airline tickets for a really good price. And then we also happened to get a really good deal on our hotel, which was right there in City Walk, which is really nice too. Of course, the entry to the park price never goes on sale, so that didn't change, but we still got to go and have a really good time. Now, we went right in the middle here of winter and it was very cold. Um, we went um, in January, which is considered to be the least crowded time, and we went on a Wednesday, which is supposed to be the least crowded day, and it was really not that bad, <laughs> so that was the thing that was going for us, but uh, the weather was beautiful, but it was cold. It was about uh, two degrees and Celsius, and um, with a ridiculous wind that just bit at you like you wouldn't believe. But who cares when you're having so much fun, right? So of course, the one thing I was really super excited about was to drink butter beer, and I got the medium range souvenir cup. There is a premium kind of fancier one that costs like almost $40, 4,000 yen for that. This was about 12, I think, and it came with the butter beer, of course. We uh, sat down at Three Broomsticks and had this, and that was just so cool because if you've seen the movies and you've you know seen any of the stories about this uh, the, the USJ's Wizarding World of Harry Potter, it looks exactly like you're in the movie. They did such a good job of making it all, so it was very cool to sit there and have butter beer. And if you go in the winter, the butter beer is hot. And I think that is really the only way to drink it because it was so good. So that was definitely a highlight of getting to go, was getting to have this. This is plastic, you know, but, you know, the uh, this part here is not a sticker. It's embedded, so it's not going to, like, wear off or anything, which is nice. So, um, you know, and obviously you can hold a, a warm drink in here. I don't know if you'd want to necessarily, you know, heat stuff up in this, but uh, putting something in here could be cool. So very cute i was really excited to get that for sure um and then another thing i got was i wanted to get a coffee mug of some kind but i didn't want to actually i have a tendency a really bad tendency of breaking things all the time so <laughs> i went i opted for the stainless steel version here with the hogwarts crest on the outside and this cute little bag that you can keep stuff in so that was cool. It was so hard to choose gifts, like things for myself, because there's so many things to pick from. But um, I definitely wanted to get a chocolate frog because I really wanted the card. And this is the box, and it's just straight from the movie. If you've seen the movie, they've used the exact same details for that. We already took the frog out, but we were, I was pretty excited because I got Helga Hufflepuff, which is cool because I'm actually a Hufflepuff according to the tests on the uh, Pottermore site. So um, that was nice. You know, I, I wanted either, uh, well, I wanted any of them really, I don't care, but it was cool to get her. So that was kind of cool. And uh, you know, the inside then was the huge chocolate frog, which was solid chocolate, which I was surprised. I thought it was gonna be hollow, like, you know, Easter bunnies usually are, but it was solid chocolate and it's really good. Good high quality chocolate for sure. Um, then another fun kind of gift that I got was this little case here and it actually had cookies in it and it was $40 which seems like a lot but this is like a Hogwarts trunk you know it's supposed to be a replica of that and it has the Hogwarts logo there kind of embossed into it and both sides it's just so pretty and so cute and I could put like little Hogwarts you know does uh, Harry Potter stuff in here and it pops open really nice in here and I'm trying to get what I have in here out of there but you can kind of see it's nice lined kind of box there really well made so uh, $40 you get a nice set of cookies uh, little shortbread cookies and then um, you get to keep this box I like those kinds of souvenirs that give you a really neat box as the result of that so definitely something to look into for that for sure um 
And then the last thing, of course, that I got was I got a wand. <laughs> and that was just so cool. I, you know, I was just so having such a good time. It was really cool. We had a great time. So uh, we went to Ollivander's and they, we happened to be one of the first people right into the park in the morning there at nine o'clock. And we got to see them do the little show where they picked somebody from the audience to have, to have the wand pick them, which was really cool. That was kind of a cute little thing. But then um, when you buy a wand, you could choose, it comes in this cute little bag, nice bag. But I was a little sad because it did get beat up pretty bad from walking around in the park the whole day. So if you really wanted, it's hard to choose. You know, you want, you want to take good care of it if you can. But then um, there was a couple different ways you could get a wand. You could choose one of the characters from the movies wands. You could get an, a regular wand or a magic wand. And the magic wands are the ones that you can use in the park at the different locations to do magic with. Um, I chose to get the wand that's for my month of my birth. Uh, you can get that too. And it just happened that when I did my wand test on Pottermore, I was a, a vine, uh, an ivy uh, person. And that also happened to be September, so I was kind of lucky about that. So um, I, I that's which one I got. I kind of show you guys what it looks like here. You can get uh, these ones are all just the uh, um, magic ones, so you can use them in the park. Now this is kind of what mine looks like here. It's cool. And then at the tip is this sort of little ball. And then that's connected to how the sensor system works in the park to know when you're doing magic. And then the map to the park is here. And this one shows the map of Hogsmeade. This side has Japanese and then the other side is in English. So it's up to you guys, you know, which one you want to look at. But this is like the park's map. And then every time you see one of those little numbers, that's a goal. That's where a medallion is in the park. And at those locations, you can do different uh, little spells to make things happen and the cool thing is that there's lots of people uh, staff hanging out there there's somebody that's like a, a wand specialist who can help you because it's surprisingly difficult sometimes to get it to work some of them I got right away other ones it was like eight tries and I still hadn't gotten it but it was not crowded enough where we ever had to wait more than for two people ahead of us to go. So, you know, we really were at, uh, there at a good time. I know later when it's at its peak, it can get ridiculous. You can be waiting, you know, 20, 30 minutes just to get a chance to do this. Now, we did not go through and do all of them. We were also spending time at the park doing other things. But uh, I did wind up doing four or five spells, and it was a lot of fun. So... Definitely something you should do. I was, you know, really excited to get that, to have the map for that and the box and everything. It's just a very beautiful keepsake. It is $50, so that is pricey. But, you know, you're getting stuff, uh, you know, you're, I'm never probably going to go again because it's cost too much money to go. So I was thinking, got to just get what I want now. But very cool, fun memento. If you happen to be a fan, I would highly recommend it. I know one of the downsides to coming to the one in Japan is that it is true. Everybody speaks Japanese, um, you know, so the hearing things and stuff and the explanations can be a little, you know, oh, wait, what are they talking about? Um, but the, some of the, the guy that was playing Ollivander, he spoke Japanese and English. So, you know, it, there's a mix of it a little bit here and there. But when you go like through the walk of Hogwarts, um, and stuff, you know, all of the, the, the photos, the paintings, the talk, they all speak Japanese. And when they show Harry and Hermione and Ron for a bit in there, that's all in dubbed in Japanese too. So that part, you know, if you're, uh, that, if that bothers you, you might want to keep that in mind, but I'm, you know, obviously I understand Japanese, but <laughs> that's, so that's not a problem for me, but I did kind of want to hear their voices as I'm used to hearing them in English. So that part was a little different, but certainly not enough to make me not want to go. So <laughs> it was very, very cool. So I just wanted to share with you guys some of the stuff that I got from that and, uh, highly recommended if you know, you're going to be visiting Japan and to be in Osaka cause it's, uh, uh, a lot of fun. So um, I'll have some more fun things to share with you guys in the days to come. Thanks again away so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.